الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات والصلاة والسلام على سيد السادات سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين You know it's people think that if they have the wealth they can go to Hajj, they can go to Umrah they can go to anywhere they want but it's by the permission of Allah being here in the house of Allah remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being grateful for the gift the divine gift, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rahmatun Muhda. He's a complete mercy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Being here, this is we can we can put all the resources together. We wouldn't be able to do if, if Allah didn't want us here. If Allah doesn't want us to invite us to Mecca, there's people who have millions of dollars. They can't go. Their hearts don't even want it. Even though Allah made the house a magnetic pull to the house, وَجَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا. We made the house mathaba. It means that your hearts are being pulled to it all the time. The Kaaba is so amazing. Our hearts should be inclined to every time. How can we get an opportunity to go there? What's happening there in the spiritual realm? That so many people during tawaf, they got immense closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should thank Allah for this gift to choose, that has chosen us to be here. Right? In a gathering of dhikr. In a gathering of remembrance. And we know that this is one of the greatest things. And then to combine that dhikr with some speech or, or talk to combine with it knowledge. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he's mu'allim ﷺ, he's a teacher. So the, his favorite thing ﷺ is to teach. But not to teach only with speech. But to teach with his state. There's people that became Muslim just by seeing him ﷺ. His hal, his straight is so powerful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His heart is constantly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can it not be when there's people from his nation, from his community, hundreds of years later, when they asked him, describe Habib Umar bin Abdurrahman al-Attas, radiyallahu anhu, the shaykh of Imam al-Haddad, radiyallahu anhu majma'in wa nafa'na bihim fi darayn, they said, qalb wa rab. Two words. He said, he's a man, Right? Heart and his Lord. That's all there is there. That means that he has no lower desires. He has no nafs to pull him in this direction. His heart is completely guided and completely connected to Allah. So everything that he does is in khidmah of the, of the creation. They're only here to serve creation. That's the highest honor for somebody to, to become a khadim of the Habib وسلم, to become a servant of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to be in service of his work. Because Allah sent him in this service and everybody that says labbaik. That's why the mawlid starts with labbaik ya man dallana wa hadana. Right? We, we, we answer your call, Ya Rasulullah. You told us to come and join this caravan to call to Allah. What an honor. And alhamdulillah that we're not calling by ourselves. <laughs> Otherwise we would be complete failure. We're calling through the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's His mission. It's His work. And his work is connected to the network of all the prophets. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is amazing. He's the Fakhrul Anbiya. He is the honor and pride and the most noble of the prophets. And we're doing his work, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is what? Think about it. In a very simple way, it's all mercy. It's all love. It's all compassion. To humanity. And it all starts with our own selves. That's why the hadith al musalsal bil awaliyah, the first hadith that everyone should learn. My daughter, she was five years old, that's the hadith that I gave to her as a gift. That's the first hadith. Both of them actually. But the uh, Zahra is the one I remember the, you know, clearly right now. That I read it to her and I wrote it down and this is the date that it happened. But this is hadith al musalsal bil awaliyah. What does that mean? Why would you learn about hadith of mercy? Because it means that you can't give mercy if you don't have mercy. You have to love yourself. You have to take care of yourself. You have to be merciful to yourself. And then, and then you can give it to people. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he's Rahma, he's all mercy. <laughs> now he can give it, right? And everybody wants it. Right? And one of my teachers joked, you know, in a beautiful way that, you know, people who love the Prophet ﷺ immensely, and they love the Kaaba, but they want to finish their Umrah and go straight to Medina. He said, but the Kaaba misses us and loves us. We want to spend time with her too. 
Allah, Allah made the Prophet is there's a famous nasheed, right? In Urdu, it's a Makki Madani. The Prophet is he's from Makkah and Medina. All, both of his those places, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد. This is his land. Allah honored him with it. When Alexander the Great wanted to attack Arabia, what happened? His whole mission failed and he died. He didn't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved this land called Al-Hijaz. Hijaz means a protection. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a shield. And it's the Hijaz of the Prophet ﷺ is being all prepared for him to come. And prepared in what way? If you think it outwardly, why? It's a barren desert, there's nothing there, it's rocky mountains. But Allah's plan is so amazing. And now look at it. Everyone from all the world is coming to that barren desert. SubhanAllah, this is how Allah works. Allah works in mysterious, amazing ways. And we have to submit ourselves to Allah's plan. As, so as sooner we get to that, that is when you sell your intellect for love. That is when you do the right thing because now you understand this can only take you a certain distance. The thing, the, the energy that's going to take you to the completely the path is to be on the path of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Mawlana Rumi talks about this. He says, I went to every town, traveled here and there. I never found a city or, or a town more beloved than the town of Ishq, the, the town of love. This is the town of love, mashallah. This city, all of these places where we go where we can freely love and talk about the deen, and talk about the, the holistic way of the Prophet Sallallahu that his mission is mercy, it's love, it's taking care of people, it's concern for humanity. If we do that, SubhanAllah, this is, this is, a, this is a land of, then this is a, one of those cities. This is where they want to be, they feel at home. And if it wasn't, they go to a place and they make it that way. <laughs> So that's the hard job of the Sahaba. Within 23 years, they're all the way in China, spreading the mission, the way, and the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? Do you see in any of the history books that people say, no, we didn't like them, we don't want them to be here. The ones that came, they came with love and mercy and guidance. All those people are Muslims, and if you were to tell them to give up your Islam, they would never do it. They've been Muslim for uh, over a thousand years. Amazing Muslims, and this poem that we read, right? The 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 the, the poem itself, the the Diya Lama Habi Umar wrote it in exile. He had, he had been exiled from his home in southern Yemen. He has he lost everything? He has no family, nobody, anybody. He's is exiled in Oman, and he's in drowning in the love of Allah. He's remembering the Prophet Sallallahu work in his mission. He says, I want to write something about him so people can love him and appreciate him and look at this. Now, Indonesia, millions of people are reciting it. Malaysia, millions of people are reciting it. All the way to California, alhamdulillah. We've been reciting it since, since 2002. Alhamdulillah. And then finally I met him in 2004. And at that time it was on a cassette. And we, that's how we learned the, the Ya'ul Lama. Of Habib Omar, I, I, I went and uh, was blessed in, in Mina to sit and, 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 and rest in, in the, the tent next to Habib Omar. And then when Habib woke up from his rest, they said, go and visit him and say salam. And we said salam and we spent the whole day with Habib Omar. And the gathering was one of those gatherings that you just close your eyes and you would say that we were really in paradise. What is paradise after all, right? Paradise is a state of being. There's a physical, but ultimately if you can find that state of being, then you're in paradise. And you're tasting, it's called Jannatul Ma'arif. That's why Sayyidina Ja'far bin Abi Talib, who in this month he was, he was martyred in, in, in Jordan, in the blessed land of Mu'ta. It was, uh, many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But Sayyidina Ja'far bin Abi Talib, the Prophet ﷺ was sitting in Medina, and he said, as salamu wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And one of the companions who was there said, Ya Rasul, who did you give salam to? He said, this was the spirit, the ruh of Sayyidina Ja'far bin Abi Talib. He had just died in, in Mu'ta. And he doesn't want to enter paradise before saying salam to me. So the scholars interpreted this that it meant that the Prophet ﷺ was more precious to him than even paradise. Right? He's waiting for the moment when the physical body of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions are with him and they're spiritually together in there. Right, but but he had to ha he had to see the Prophet ﷺ one more time before he goes to the next world. 
So this is a this is a, a heart state. Our our religion is so beautiful, is so amazing. The three dimensions of Islam, iman, ihsan, is the and then the fourth pillar, which is being the the, the signs of the end of time. We should study this and re learn this and constantly think about what this means. Why did Allah give us these dimensions? They say the first is that Islam is teaching you about the outward form, the framework, the mabani, and iman is teaching you the maani, the meanings. Why? Why does it matter? What's the wisdom in it? Because if you know that, then you'll appreciate it. And there's many people, they do the mabani, they do the outward, because they never learn that. As soon as something changes in life, they're just ready to abandon all of that. Their prayer doesn't even have a, any weight. Anything in their life about with Allah, they have no relationship to even go back to Allah. And Allah will take anybody. Allah loves tawbah. Just turn back to Allah. Ultimately, uh, no one can judge you except Allah. He knows you exactly. Everything about you, He knows you. This is a blessing. Alhamdulillah. And then the, the Iman section or dimension is about the ma'ani, these, the wisdoms, and then Ihsan is the spirit. It's the ruh. It's what gives life to the religion. And so all these topics that we talk about, the, the mercy and the love and all, that is from the Ihsan. And, and as soon as these three come together and we avoid the pitfalls of the, the signs of end of time, then our Islam is, is complete because this, this happened to the companions. That Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of a human being and told these to, to the companions that were present. And when they, when, when they left, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you know who that was? And they said, no. But he said, we said, but he couldn't be a traveler. Because he's too clean. How could he be a traveler, right? In the desert and he's so clean. And then the Prophet said, Atakum Jibreel, Atakum li yu'allimakum deenakum. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aw kama qal. He said, that was Jibreel alayhi salam. He came to teach you your religion. And that's the, that's the holistic understanding of the religion. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that whoever Allah loves, Right? He gives them a deeply understanding of the religion. So we know that it's the holistic meaning. It can't be one dimension. It means the full 360 picture of what it is, the mission of the Prophet ﷺ, and getting to the core of it. Not forgetting the letter, but not also being abandoning the spirit. We need that. But the spirit is what gives life. And now we need that, alhamdulillah. The whole world is, has to see the beauty and spirit of, the, of this religion. And before they can come to the, to, the, to, the, to the outward form. That's why sometimes if somebody asks me advice, and says, you know, I'm really struggling with prayer. I say, just start with tahara. Spend a whole day, just maintain your wudu. Make ghusl right and do wudu right and just stay like that. Your whole life and experience is going to be different that day. Then slowly you'll change. And then you'll be ready for prayer. You can't do all of it at once. Mm -hmm. The blessed teacher of our teachers, Habib Ahmed Mashura Haddad, anhu, what happened? This man who was a, a chief of a village or a tribe came to him and he said, Habib, I want to become Muslim, but, you know, and this is in East Africa. I think it's in Uganda or Kenya. And he said, Habib, I want to become Muslim, but there's no way I can do five prayers and Juma and this and that. And have you seen there's a lot of Muslims who don't do it? <laughs> he said, it's okay, what, what can you do? And then slowly, slowly he helped him to the point where that man was asking Habib, come, let's go for prayer. This is wisdom. This is what we need. This is what we need. So this, these, uh, this mawlid, it's, it's an educational gathering, but with dhikr of Allah, which is the two favorite things of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, dhikr and ilm. And this is the, the foundation of all spirituality in Islam and all sacred traditions. Nobody can have just dhikr and no ilm. And nobody can have just ilm and no dhikr. They go together. They're twins. Just like ilm goes with hilm. So once you have ilm, you have to also have forbearance. You have to have the character and the beauty of it. That's why Imam Malik, his, his mom, would put his turban on and say, take from your teacher's hilm before you take from his ilm. Take from the hilm to learn the character, the good character. 
being a true human being because ultimately all this teachings of the Prophet ﷺ is to make us beautiful human beings complete human beings so that we can reflect the beauty of God in creation there's nothing more beautiful than human beings that are aligned with Allah all right, all, even even the, the mountains in the hadith, the mountains will talk to each other. Did a Muslim ever pass by you? Someone who believes with Allah, who, who's aligned with Allah, the Creator? I said, yes. I said, you're so lucky today that I didn't get one to pass near me. That's why when you go out in nature, make dhikr of Allah. Remember Allah. Because the, the, everything is aware. Everything is alive in their own way. And they know. And so the, we, we have to be in harmony. With, 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 with what Allah wants right? If, if, if it was just that we were doing actions Then robots would do it better than us Why didn't Allah create that? Why did Allah give us volition? Why did Allah give us uh, uh, free will? Why did Allah give us everything that we have? Look at our body is perfectly designed to make sajda It's perfectly designed to make ruku It's perfectly designed for everything And then everybody that's on the wrong path They're taking it for something else Right? But it's perfectly designed for that. Right? And even when we stand, it's alif. Then we go to ruku, it's dal. Then we were in sajda, it's meem. So it's adamic. We're human. Oh, this is our human states when we go to, to Allah. And namaz in the Urdu and Persian language, it comes from the Sanskrit or in the Avasta, which is the original language of, of, of Sanskrit. What does it mean? It means respect, it's namaz. The same word they get namaste from. It means I give you respect, I bow to you. I show you def deference. And so our prayer, word for prayer and namaz, it, it, it signifies the true spirit and meaning and wisdom of what prayer is for. We're not just doing form. We're giving deference and respect to our Lord. That's what we do it for. The meaning has to be understood. So we, we use the word to define the meaning. They could have said salah, but what does salah in Arabic mean? People think of it just per formal prayer, but the Arabic word means dua. Again, the spirit of it. What is the spirit of your prayer? It, it's it's humble, deference, respect to your Lord, and pouring out your heart, asking your Lord to guide you. And then in the other forms, you don't you you have no prayer. Generally, all you're doing is glorifying God. Why? Because when you glorify God, that's the most beautiful way of asking without asking. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's a popular thing, right? Tell me without telling me. This is what we're doing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're telling Allah, we're asking without asking. It's the highest station. That's why Allah starts the Quran with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We praise Him. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And it's a beautiful thing, right? That Allah chose to start the book with these three names or attributes, you, however you want to define it. Bismi Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Again, back to this mercy. Back to everything is like this. So we are so blessed that we have authors and scholars that have summarized all of these things for us. When you read the Qasida uh, Muhammadiyah, that's written in Egypt. We traveled to Egypt, do you know that? We went to Egypt, and that's, that's uh, Imam al-Busiri's poem. Anhu, he lived in Cairo, and he, 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 uh, he died in Alexandria in the north of Egypt. And, I, and when I went through the city, uh, old Cairo, I saw it as graffiti on the, on the walls. Imagine this. Their graffiti is, is Qasida Muhammadiyah. It's all over the wall, walls, written everywhere. Muhammadun ashraful arabi wal ajami. Subhanallah. It is so beautiful calligraphy that's right. And then we read the other Qasida, Salam, Nahnu fi Rauda. That's Morocco. We went all the way to the to West Africa. Sidi Muhammad ibn al Habib, who died in 1972. His poems, he said it. He said it, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. He said, These poems will be read in the farthest west. In the farthest west. And now look at everyone in California, all these places, people are reciting it. And he wrote that when he got to the Rauda Mubarak, the, the blessed Rauda of the Prophet ﷺ, he sat there and he wrote, Nahnu fi Rauda. We are in the Rauda of the Prophet. Hudurun, we're present. 
طَالِبِينَ الرِّضَى وَحُسْنَ قَبُولِي We're asking Allah for His, his, his pleasure. وَحُسْنَ قَبُولِي And that He accepts us in the most beautiful way. What's the, what is, how does He accept you in the most beautiful way? When Allah gives you La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah when you leave this earth. When Allah has the angels come and take your ruh in the highest places. And that, that, that's the, the spiritual state that we're talking about. People are in that state, but then if they weren't, now in the next world they're going to be in that state. Until the body meets again. And a new body and a new form more amazing and beautiful than ever. This is the atwar of the human being, the state, states of the human being. We're a spirit only, and then we were joined with body, and then body and spirit separate, and then uh, the, 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 the body and spirit meet again, and then they enter paradise forever, never to separate again. The design of Allah, the musawwir, the most beautiful designer, the beautiful, most beautiful artist, Mawlana Jami Radian, who he has a beautiful line, he says, praising the artwork is praising the artist. So we're praising the Prophet Muhammad is he's an amazing artwork. The, the most amazing, moderate, most balanced, most harm, uh, most uh, in harmony with everything and in tune with everything, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine this. Imagine that because he kept on walking from his house to his, to his prayer niche, every day doing that, the whole place transforms into rawda. The scholars say that that's the wisdom behind it. Because he walked there back and forth all the time, he just kept on, he converted the whole place into a rawda. Because wherever he frequents a lot, it becomes rawda. So if he frequents your heart, it becomes rawda. If you remember him a lot, when the qabr happens, they ask you questions, right? One of them is, what do you say about this man? And when you answer it right, then your grave becomes rawda. Min riyadh al-jannah. That's what we, do. we recite at the end of a burial. We say, oh Allah, make this uh, grave a, par a garden from the gardens of paradise. But, it's, but we know the formula, what to do. Let's just do it. And, and so this, this whole thing can be summed up in ma'rifa, mahabba, and ittiba. This is what the scholars have in consensus. That it's about, you will never love him until you truly know him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is why it's educational. We, have to, we learn about who our Prophet Sallallahu was. And then we start to love him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and everybody's love is in different ways. They say there's four kinds of love. But one of them is this love when you're, it's a love of appreciation. You can't believe how much this person did for humanity, for everybody. How he, uh, when I started, I said that, you know, a, a third of his time that he had personally, he even gave that most of it to people. So what did he have for himself, sallallahu alayhi wa Right? And now when you look at the pictures, they designed his home and his masjid and everything. You think, subhanallah, his whole life is 1,000% transparent to the whole thing. He's just, this is who he is. All he's doing is guide, guiding and helping and worshipping and doing great things. So how can you not love him? And then, now you want to follow him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because if your beloved is going and doing something, you want to be there, right? Everyone will, will do that. That's why Allah says, when, when, when night happens, everyone goes to their beloved, then why isn't my people coming to me? أَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مُحِبٍ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَخْلُوَ بِحَبِيبِهِ doesn't the, every beloved love to be with their beloved? So we have to have a portion of night for Allah. That time when you go to your Lord, the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did. And a portion of that, we have a little small glimpse of that. And we go and we, we, we act like our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We say, yeah, our Prophet went like this humbly before Allah. We should have a portion, we go there. And if not, our teacher would say, he said, if you can't even do anything, just get out of, out of, out of bed and say, Ya Allah, I love you and go back to sleep. And watch what's going to happen. Wow. So very simple, right? Just say, Ya Allah, I love you. This is a time that amazing things are happening. If every, nobody reached the highest of, 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 of friendship with Allah except they had night prayer as a part of their practice. We have to make that a part of our practice at least once a week. Just get up at the night and do some portion of time with Allah. And I'll tell you the qudra of Allah not to point to myself. I'm nothing, but the qudra of Allah, the power of Allah. Around three o'clock at night, I was doing dua, like, you know, and it was a t I got emotional. 
In the morning, someone called me and said, we need somebody to be a guide for Hajj. Can you go? Allah. Subhanallah. And then next thing you know, we went. And then we went to Jordan. We saw Ashab al-Kaf. We went. We met so many amazing righteous people and visited so many righteous places. And then we went to Mecca and Medina, one of the most memorable trips. And in that trip, I met Habib Omar at wow. that year. Wow. So all these amazing things happen. We just turn to Allah. And when Allah wants, in the time He wants, in the way He wants. We have to be servants. We have to submit. Right? That's, what, that's, that's the height of wisdom. The height of wisdom is to know our place. Bedil Sradion, who he says, amazing Bedil Basjud Bandagi Tau Ambosh, Tabari Nafas Badush Dari Hambosh, in Kargay Askidar Tinatitus, Allah Nametawan Shudad, Adam Bosh. This man, this great man from, from Uzbek roots, but spent all of his life in northern India, Radiallahu Anhu, one of the great scholars of Islam, Bedil Sahib, a, mean, a person who has no desire, means he conquered his, his lower self. Who he said, he said, always be humble in the state of, of, of prostration. Your heart and your physical being be completely submitted to Allah. You can't become Allah, so just be Adam. It's impossible. Allah made you to be, because there's the height out of the human being, the, the, the thing that wants to be like Allah is the nafs. That's the, that's the only thing that nafs has this thing where it, it wants to have lordly ability. So that when you have that, then khalas is over, then you can truly become Adamic. And then on top of that, Adamic, but we we're blessed from the nation of the Prophet so we get the Muhammadan akhlaq and the Muhammadan nur, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're so blessed. There could have been another nation and that's it, khalas. Our time passed and we, we didn't become from the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we get so much more, and on top of that, we enter Jannah first, even though we came last. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil awaleen wa fil akhirin wa fi kulli waqtin waheen wa fil malayla ala ala yawm al-deen. Ameen. Wa laqad ashartu li na'ati ma nausafu wa tuhi al-qulub wa tuhayyiju al-ashyana. Wa Allah al-qadatna alayhi fa ma yusawi al-qawl minna aw yakunu thalana. Lakinna hubban fi sarayri qada'a rimadih safwati rabbina wa hadana. Wa idhim tazajna bin mawaddati ha huna narfa'u aydi فقرنا ورجانا للواحد الأحد العلي إلهنا متوسلين بمن إليه دعانا مختاره وحبيبه وصفيه زين الوجود به الإله حبانا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا بالمصطفى قبلنا أجب دعوانا أنت لنا أنت لنا يا ذخرنا في هذه الدنيا وفي أخرانا أصلح لنا الأحوال واغفر ذنبنا ولا تواخذ ربي إن أخطانا واسلك بنا في نهج طه المصطفى ثبت على قدم الحبيب خطانا أرنا بفضل منك طلعة أحمد في بهجة عين الرضا ترعانا واربط به في كل حال حبلنا وحبال من ود ومن ولانا والمحسنين ومن أجاب دعنا وذوي الحقوق وطالبنا وصانا والحاضرين وساعيا في جمعنا ها نحن بين يديك أنت ترانا ولقد رجوناك فحق سلنا واسمع بفضلك يا سميع دعانا وانصر بنا سنة طه في بقاع الأرض واقمع كل من عدانا وانظر إلينا واسقنا كاس الهنا واشفي وعافي عاجلا مرضانا واقضي لنا الحاجات واحسن ختمنا عند الممات واصلحا وقبانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا بالمصطفى صلي عليه واله ما حركت ريح الصبا اغصانا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يص وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد المرسلين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا خاتم النبيين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من أرسلك الله رحمة للعالمين ورضي الله تعالى أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين آمين
الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واهدنا وعافنا وارزقنا يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا رب مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم جزء بذكري خيش مشغولا ما كن اذكر ما زيش محروما ما كن اي خدا ان واسراه جن ما كن سرخشان عشق را نالان ما كن بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين may Allah bless you and all of you and thank you جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم